but take a look at the wheels. The gaps are not appearing here. He knows now is the time where he needs to go. Seb Berwick trying to come across. So too is Simon Yates. Hershey in second spot. Dinam is there in the black colours. Sven Erik Bistrom is opening up the throttle. Huge effort. This is the moment to get rid of the fast finishers. They need to get away from the likes of Caleb Ewan. But is it enough? Uh, as he looks over his shoulder, he won't like what he saw because there is a huge group still intact there. Very small gaps now opening up, but essentially that entire group together, there's maybe a 20, 30 riders gone off the back, but it's still a very large group. As oh. Bistrom goes around the corner, another look, pressure on, and get into the downhill. The man who has never won a professional bike race except his national championship back in 2020. He's been a pro since 2015. He's trying to steal the show. There were huge expectations for the Norwegian. He was the under-23 road race world champion, and he won it in this fashion with a late solo breakaway. Well, all we need now is for Katie Bune to chase him down and get revenge. <laughs> With 8.2 kilometres to come, the climbing's not finished yet. It is only a short one coming up. They'll go down to the river again, cross the narrow bridge, it kicks up, and then it hits you in the face. That is a wall. It's short, but it's sharp. Caleb Ewan, he's in the back of this group. He might be in the back, but the important thing, he's in it. He is, and he's got Jay Vine behind him. That's the sort of company Caleb Ewan's climbing legs can keep with on a climb like this. Well, he might be in a small group, in the group, but it's a small group. That's yeah. the thing. There are really not many left, and Caleb is still there. Bistrom with about 80 metres on his first chaser from Sudal Quickstep. Looked like it was still Devon Enns. This is at the back of the race. James Fouché, the uh, Kiwi national champion there for Bolton Equities. Bistrom looks like Mark Hershey chasing down the second place. Who does the chasing? That's the big question. The group continues to swell. It is AG2R on the front. Caleb Ewan looking for teammates in this group. He doesn't have any. Well, AG2R, they still have at least three riders in that group, but they're not going to ride for a sprint for Ben O'Connor. So it's possibly O'Connor going to take up the chase himself for whoever is the fastest man left from their team. What a performance by this team. They had Taco Vanderhorn off the front for 130 kilometres. Now it is the Norwegian Sven Erik Bistrom. Oh. Well, Enter Marche, Circus Wanti. They're in the winning mood. They've won three races in four days this week in Mallorca. And now down here in Australia, they're trying to add one more with Bistrom. This is Chris Froome, who is on the front of the peloton. It's Froome for the Israel Premier Tech team, who is doing the chasing. They are coming together at the front. And I'm not sure the rear are not coming together to the front. They're getting very close. It's the nasty little climb here. Final effort. Mauro Schmidt, it is, who's trying to go across from Suldala Quick Step. He's been a stage winner in the Giro. He's good company to keep for Sven Erik Bistrom. He spent a lot of energy to get there. Yeah, it took him a fair bit to get there down that descent. But as soon as it started to climb again, he was able to make his way across and into the wheel. Two is better than one because that's what's going to give them a chance to actually stay away. But the chase, it continues behind UAE. Number 65 is Mark Hershey himself. Simon Yates in the wheel, then it's Dries Davenens because he's protecting the position of his teammate Schmidt in front. He's in the position to win again now. He's got a man up front, taking all the pressure off him. Still searching for Alberto Betio. You can see the pink colours of the EF. Is he going to go down as the great escape? It so often has in this event over the eight years of running. Flick of the elbow by the Swiss star, Mauro Schmidt, to indicate it was a double elbow flick, the speed up, the single elbow flick is, it's your turn to go to the front. Not swapping off smoothly now too, so Bistrom back to the front, so Schmidt and Bistrom, they've really found the accord, those two, and uh, this is our chance to steal it away and stay out of the clutches of Caleb Ewan and Michael Matthews. Full commitment by the pair of them. No more water required, a souvenir for a spectator. Who's getting the chasing organised? It's Jaco Alula. They have spent the entire day on the back foot. 
they've now made the decision. They're pulling the trigger. They know Michael Matthews is in this group. So that was Simon Yates, who was first man on the front. He's had his chance. He's gone in groups before. Now they're saying, get this back together. We've got our fast man. And here's another one. Dion Smith also in the group, number 57. He's a quick finisher. And to wave the flag at the finish line, the great Phil Anderson, the first yellow jersey wearer at the Tour de France from Australia, the first non-European to wear yellow. That's a nice touch. Well, he could be waving at the first Norwegian to win this race right now. And at the moment, it looks like a two versus two. Bistram and Schmidt off the front and back in that chasing group was just two riders doing the work, the rider in third wheel. Let the gap open and called Yates back in between. And he's done it again when the UAE rider has come back in between. More reinforcements, AG2R coming to the front. They are getting involved in the chase. Number 82, that is Lucas Hamilton. He's ready to contribute. This is Alex Berdan going forward at number 12 for AG2R. So that is Hershey, number 65 from UAE in fourth wheel. He's been chasing, so that's going to be for Alessandro Covi, the fastest man in their team who's still in this group. This group. Ben O'Connor going through number 11. Simon Yates doing all the work, which indicates that he's not going to be in. It's his favourite train. He's behind him now. He's got to hope Michael Matthews gets in on the act towards the end. Kel O'Brien's still there. And we've found Alberto Bettiol because he has found the back wheel of Caleb Ewan. Oh, he's clever, isn't he? He's a long way down. There's not too many tricks you can teach Alberto Bettiol, and he's found the man that he thinks is the favourite to win the sprint. But if there's going to be a sprint for the victory, they must catch these two. But the reinforcements have arrived at the front of the chase group. Bistrom and Schmidt, the, cha the chase is only eight seconds behind now. They've pulled back two seconds. They're not in a position yet to start to think about how they can beat the other rider that they're in the break with. The big challenge with three kilometres remaining still comes from behind. Schmidt on the front. Fifth overall at the end of the Santos Tour down under. Carrying that form to Victoria now. He's only 23 years of age. He swings off. It's now Sven Eric Bistrom going through. A man who loves the classics. He's built for the Flemish roads, northern France. This is a course that is suiting number 51. Uh, definitely suiting him, but these two, they have to have the accord that they're going to ride all the way in to stay out of the grips of this chasing group containing Caleb Ewan, Michael Matthews, Alberto Bettiel. There's Luke Plapp on the left-hand side because if they start to fox with each other out the front, start to get tactical, try and save the legs, no. that is when this group will pounce. But it's back out to 10 seconds with just over two kilometres remaining. Last little uphill section over the railway line, I'm and it's onto the waterfront. Absolutely. 2.2 kilometres to go. They might have stolen the race here because a lot of confusion back there. The riders all want to win, and they know whoever leads out the chase isn't going to win. So the hesitation is in place. Well, we've had the last two years being the years of the Scandinavians. Are we starting 23 in a similar mode? A two-rider breakaway survived yesterday in the women's race. Two riders in 2020 survived and won by four seconds. The chase, though, is now on in a big way from AG to R. And that chase is not nine seconds behind. They've nearly got them to have come very, very quickly. And they can see them just in front, out of the roundabout on one side, entry into the roundabout on the left-hand side, led by AG to R. Citroën. The gap on the road is around 90 to 100 metres. One and a half kilometres to go. It's going to take a couple of big turns out of this chase group to catch them. Six seconds on the roundabout. That's all, but they look closer than they are with this camera shot. They are 100% committed. They could well be caught in the last 100 metres. Either way, we are once again at the end of the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race being treated to a nail-biting finish. We have seen this race come down to the wire on so many occasions and 2023 is going to deliver once again. The gap is still good for these two. They'll be starting to feel more confident, but they cannot start to look at each other yet no. and try and save anything. Schmidt is hurting now. First time I've seen him really grimace. The gap is still there. We're under the kilometre to go, Banner. That's the white signs that you can see on either side of the road. 1K remaining for the chase group. Oh. Who can get organised to close it down? Schmidt for me. 
now we see the Australian national team. No, it's the Australian national champion. Platt. This is Platt working for Ethan Hayter. Platt with a big move on the front, but he's opened up the gap to the rest of the chase, led by Jaco Alula. So they're unable to follow the wheel, and that could be the thing that allows the two leaders to stay in front. They look over the shoulder from Bistrom. Oh. Schmidt has started to gamble. No more coming through to the front. He thinks we've got enough gap. I'm going to use him up. And here comes the lead out. It's Cal O'Brien who is on the front for Jaco Alula. He is then being followed. The breakaway has been caught. Platt still with his nose in front. O'Brien is chasing. There's been a fall. Damien Suze has gone down. Matthews waits to open up. Caleb Ewan is charging from the outside. He's getting swamped. It is also the challenge coming through from Hugo Page. Matthews on the inside. But it's neither of them. And the win goes to DSM. Taking the victory is Mayhofer. What a performance. And that was the man they were protecting all throughout Mayhofer. And that is their second win in as many days on two different continents. What a performance by Mayhofer. Bursting through the middle. Nose in front. Not challenged in the end. Taking his first major victory at World Tour level. Well, the crash was unfortunate, but the speed they wiped them out at, uh, everybody thought they'd suddenly swung into a win. He is not going to believe this. He is absolutely beside himself. The team talked about watch out for May Ruffer, and we know why now. His second season of the Pro Peloton, his first victory. It's going to take a while to sink in. It certainly is. First is best for sure. <laughs> Roman Combo to congratulate him. You've got to love the emotion of sport. You have been such a hard work emotion to get into this position. 800 metres to go, he was never going to win. No. Here's another look at it. Luke Platt with the lead out. There was a touch of wheels with the sprint in the group, caused some disruption. Kel O'Brien in the white and blue colours. I think that was Goudon who went down from AG to R. Hugo Paz challenging from the Intermarche team. Simon Clark, who it was from the Israel Premier Tech into third. Michael Matthews was fourth. Corbin Strong, fifth. Michael Matthews in sixth. May offer the surprise packet. Never won a bicycle race since he became a professional. He's been on the world tour first year last year. Second year, at 22 years of age, he gets his first ever win. I think they're all reasons for tears of joy. And to see Caleb Ewan in this group finishing sixth, the fastest sprinted normally from this group of riders, yeah. but the speed being blunted by such a difficult course. I think that was the problem, that the course killed the sprinters. They had to work so hard to put themselves into that position. They were still chasing within 500 metres to go to the two escapers. There was no room for the sprinters to prepare. But that's another brilliant performance also by Simon Clark, who was chatting with us on uh, yesterday when we were watching the women's race. He said it would be nice to win. Of course it would have been, but he matches that third place now with his second back in 2015. Karayo Bay providing the backdrop to a brilliant victory from Marius Mayhofer ahead of Hugo Page. It was then Simon Clark, Michael Matthews, Corbin Strong, Caleb Bjorn, Dion Smith, Mark Hershey, George Bennett, Sean Quinn rounding out the top ten. So much.